This is the new Motorola Razr. Yeah, I know there was one released in February, but this one is pretty much better in every way. And if you're gonna buy one, here are seven features you should try first. But before we jump in, please take a moment and subscribe to the How To Do It All YouTube channel for more weekly how-to videos. So this is a pretty wonderful, albeit expensive phone. The Razer costs $1,400. That is $100 cheaper than the Razer that came out in February, but for some people, the fact that it can open and close is worth that price. I mean, just watch. Oh. But this form factor combined with Motorola's take on Android 10 provides a lot of customization and features without being overwhelming. So let's take a look at a bunch of features you should definitely try first. And the first one is the quick view display. Unlike the Galaxy Z Flip, the exterior screen on the Razer is actually useful. And with the new Razer, that tiny screen has become nothing short of a mini Android phone. There are basically uh, three modes for the display. The first is called peak display mode, and it lets you see notifications just by pressing and holding on an icon. The next is a peak display plus mode, for lack of a better word, where you can press and hold on an icon, then swipe up to reveal multiple notifications as well as respond to them. But it's the third mode, let's call it mini Android phone mode, when the true power of the quick view display gets unleashed. When the razor is closed and unlocked, you can swipe down to get to the control panel, swipe up to see something similar to the notification shade, swipe to the left to go to the camera, swipe to the right to see a grid of apps, and swipe to the right again to see contact favorites. The phone can even curate a list of apps that works well on the smaller external screen. Apps like Gmail, YouTube, Messages, Facebook can be used complete with a mini keyboard. Also, you can go back and forth between the quick view display and the interior display and pick right up where you left off. But you can also go into the manage app settings on the quick view display and turn on unlimited, which allows you to try pretty much any app on the quick view display, like PUBG Mobile. Yep, I could barely make the game out or the controls, but it is possible to play PUBG on the quick view display. I also tried Altus Odyssey and Super Mario Run. Now with unlimited enabled, not every app will be optimized for that small display, like Super Mario Run, but it's definitely worth exploring. Bing, bang, bong, bing, bang, also bang, worth exploring bing, are Moto bong, Actions. Bing, bong, moto bong, Actions are a series of clever shortcuts on your phone. You can double twist your wrist to open the camera app, or you could do a uh, karate chop motion to turn on and off the flashlight. To learn more about Moto Actions, open up the Moto app, tap on Moto Actions, then from there you can enable or disable features like three finger screenshot and flip phone over to enter D&D mode. I only wish there were a do not scratch mode, which brings me to my next tip, get a case. The Motorola Razr has Gorilla Glass 6 on the front and back, which is very durable. But after a couple of weeks, there are a few minor, hard to notice, but they are still there, scuffs. One solution is to consider a case. And Motorola makes a really nifty one for the Razer. It has two pieces, one for the top half and one for the bottom. And this particular case that I'm showing you, it came with my review unit. And Motorola tells me it will cost $50. And while we're talking about accessories, you should also consider getting wireless headphones or earbuds. Now, one of the joys of the Razer is, well, just how minimal it is when it's closed. You could consider using the USB-C to headphone jack dongle that comes in the box and then plug in some of your own wired earbuds, or you can splurge for some wireless headphones. Motorola makes some, but I also had success pairing my own AirPods Pro with the Razer. Look, it just feels so much sleeker and more minimal not having wires and dongles hanging off my phone. And sticking to the minimal vibe, you should also set up Google Pay on your Razer. Look, it's a fast and simple way to pay and you don't even need to open the phone to make it work. That said, I made an entire video that walks you through setting up Google Pay. So if you wanna learn more about it and how to use it, check that out. Hovering this razor at a coffee shop POS to pay for a to-go order is, well, a satisfying experience. Almost as satisfying as this. Opening up the phone one-handed. One of the tweaks Motorola made to the new Razer is to give the chin a more tapered shape. 
and there's this tiny area off to either side of the chin where you could push your thumb to open the phone one-handed. Razer also made the screen more taut, so it kind of wants to open the phone on its own. And if you are feeling particularly adventurous, you can flick your wrist at the same time to open up the Razer fast and quick. And that brings me to the next and last tip, which is to customize the way your software works. You see, you can change the color, shape, and fonts on your apps to suit your tastes. To do so, open the Moto app, then tap Personalize, then tap Styles. From there, you can preview different looks for your home screen before you apply it. If you back out to the main Moto app, you can also change your phone's wallpaper and app layout. So yeah, that's all I've got on the new Razer. But if I wanna hear from you, do you have a Razer? If so, what tips and tricks would you share? Also, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. And if you don't, keep your damn mouth shut. All right, let's play a little Astro Odyssey.